master, modern, uh, master of modern art in Nepal. So this guy was, I mean, he's an uh, Indian citizen. Uh, he studied in India first, and then he was studying in France. The Indian citizen, but Nepali, what, how do you say? That's the Nepali tourism. Yeah, Nepali tourism, but having Indian citizen, right? So, so uh, he was studying in France during the 50s, and King Mahendra went to France and saw him and brought him to Nepal in the early 60s. And when he came, he worked in the, the academy and sort of established this completely new movement, you know, right. and promoted this kind of art over the traditional art practices that we have. So, this is why he's called the, the Master of Modern Art in Nepal. Let's see if I'm that. Uh, it's rare to see his painting. He died long back. Um, and his paintings are like, uh, I mean, even I was studying uh, for the last like, 20 years, I didn't have chance to look at his, at his original work. Mm -hmm. So for many people, this is an opportunity to see the original pieces. Because their family is based in the US. Recently, they had an exhibition, a uh, solo exhibition of Lens in Bandar. I forgot the gallery name. Maybe I will uh, share with you later. So, anyways, and uh, it's well curated, well presented. Uh, it got a lot of uh, media attention there in the state. So, his family, son in law, lives there. And he flew here uh, for this exhibition. Oh. So, he's here now. Oh. Oh. So, so, maybe in the evening in the panel discussion, he will be coming as well. Mm. So, it's him. Um, so in this room, I started from him to very young, that side you see, like very young uh, collective, and they're doing a lot of like experimental photography, but still using like old techniques in a way. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the, the collective members is here. We'll, we'll talk with him in a bit. So, so, so we wanted to see the transition, you know, from this to this in a way. Um, um, and I, as I said, like we are trying to incorporate different forms of arts, like painting, sculpture, installation, performances, video art, digital art, also photography. So in photography, also we have separate sort of uh, history. So um, if we look at the, the photography uh, evolution, we have this like first photo camera uh, was introduced in 1915. So that came in a picture to do like uh, studio photography, right? Like black and white studio photography. And you go and take a picture and then make your citizenship. You, they need to use your uh, photo, photo, photo to make citizenship. So that's how like you see the photography come in the picture. And then the experiment, studio experiment in that. So they have this Nepal Picture Library is our collaborator. And they did uh, research some times ago. And they had this old family photo archive uh, where they got this very experimental studio photography, and people are very fascinated going to studio taking pictures. So we have that collection on the other side, so we will see. So that is from 1915 to 1918. Mm -hmm. So bringing that to one sort of section, uh, do not complete what next. Mm -hmm. So I thought, like, okay, what is the photography evolution today? So this is where these guys come in the picture, and they are doing very cool experimental um, um, like uh, photography. Um, they have uh, space, it's called Film Foundry, amazing uh, like the group, and they are doing a lot of like, very experimental, but still again, um, uh, using film itself. So they are not coming digital. So you see like they are using pinhole cameras, and, and uh, yeah. So he is there, he will talk more about it, but I just wanted to share this piece here. Um, if you look at this work, during 60s, there are like group of artists, same thing, like that thing Mahendra who brought him to Nepal. He kind of sent artists from Nepal to India, Bangladesh, and also some other country to study art. Mm -hmm. So these artists uh, were studying in Mumbai. Um, uh, started the School of Art and came during the 60s. So uh, he also started making painting like that um, over this traditional form. So um, they had a group called Skiv, like four artists in the group, Skiv, their name comes with S-K-I-V. 
So, and today we sort of every year annual exhibitions to kind of establish more and more. But it's, it's, it's there sort of continual effort um, uh, looking at more. So, one of the artists, he passed away since 20 years ago. So, even this is what I was telling you earlier, like looking at the value, like this guy sort of established modernism. But if you look at the price, it says 450, like very low price. To like my observation, but family wants to sell this, so they want to sell it. <laughs> the, it's okay. <laughs> so, so, but the real value is not that. For me, no, is historic importance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's uh, and and really, it until it gets into the circles of exhibition and people seeing it and responding to it, you know, it's the only way to raise that. That yeah. economic value of the pieces. Yeah, because you know, if you raise, you will not sell it. You know, that's uh, right. uh, you need money. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so there is things. So here, uh, this artist, uh, he also passed away uh, some four, five years ago. Manoj um, His work is always like social commentary, you know, political, religious. So it's always like making commentary on all these socio-political issues. I guess uh, he studied in Bangladesh, um, and he was one of those artists who were not like allowed to study art from the family. Um, so when I was talking to him many times ago, like um, six, seven years ago, he was saying that for some, some reason, some incident, uh, most of his family members died like, at a time. And he was so happy about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because he could study art. They, they, they were like not letting him go study art. So the person who was like putting him in, like, you know, uh, let's say the, the course and um, pressure not to study art, passed away, he was happy. So he could, from then he was like free to do art. And he's uh, like in Nepali art scene, he's one of the names like, um, that people follow. Um, he also had problem with uh, society, so he lived in dark for about 25, 30 years. He didn't come out from the house. So in his late years, you know. So yeah, so this is interesting character. <laughs> and you see the work, also see the title, and it's like always questioning, you know. Questioning society, people, the stage. So, interesting guy. <laughs> yeah. So, this part you see here, uh, so he is one of the members from Pell Foundry. Okay. So, you can talk about the, the collective and the work, please. Well, please have a look first then. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, this is our small uh, police.